Welcome to the LC2 Swansea and we're here for Budo 19. It's another big MMA fight night in Swansea. These are growing. I'm Henry Darby Cook and joining me tonight is Reese Bell and Joe Buck. He is going to be ringside for most of the night. He's also been here at the run-up to Budo 19 uh, during the weigh-ins and he's going to be talking to the fighters throughout the night. So make sure you look out for him. Okay, so um, we've got uh, Craig Allen. Um, Craig's got um, quite a lot of experience. Um, his record is four wins and 44 losses. So it seems like his, uh, it seems like he really loves to fight. That's that's probably the bottom line for it. Um, he's not too not too worried about the glory, I guess. More about more about the fight. Um, so I guess you could say one thing: he is definitely here to fight. Um, so. I think that's quite nice to see as well, isn't it? That I think so many people are kind of see now it's all about winning and money, but actually to have a passion for the sport and just to be able to fight and compete. Yeah, and I think for some people it's an outlet. It's something it's something he wants to do. It's it's, that's, it's good that he's free to do that in, in a way. Um, you know, he might not get to the to the to the heights, the dizzy heights of the UFC, but you know he loves it and that's what he wants to do. So he can crack on, I guess. Um, now we've got um, Craig Williams um, coming in. Um, I've actually trained briefly with Craig. Um, he's pretty strong. Um, he's got a good foundation, good jitsu, um, and he tends to um, tends to be very dominant uh, on top. Um, so he's good um, in the top position, um, decent wrestler. So I, I have a feeling he's going to take uh, other Craig down. Um, <laughs> I think we should just mention that they are both wearing um, similar colour shorts and both have the same first name. Yeah, cheers, boys. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, not not that easy to say. So we're going to have to say Alan and Williams. Um. <laughs> um, amateur level, yeah. So um, this is amateur level. Um, they've both got decent experience though, um, and they're amateur fighters they're happy to sort of throw down in the local shows um, club fighters yeah I think Craig Craig Allen's um, happy at the domestic level and Craig Williams may be looking to, uh, to move forward a little bit but got to start somewhere and what a place to start I mean it's a great venue the LC2 I can't believe it yeah the LC it's a, it's a huge venue um, really good facility um, but we've got the fight underway now so we'll get to the fight and Craig Williams has taken Craig Allen down Craig Allen briefly went for a choke um, Craig Williams just hammering away just trying to get any kind of shot and he's done a little step pass um, so he's gone straight into mount now um, he's going to look to posture up um, and rain down some punches on Craig Allen um, Craig Allen really needs to stop putting his hands in the air like that it's really dangerous Get, like, get himself arm barred, put his hands up like that. And what he needs to do is make some space, get some space between him at the hips, um, and try and buck his uh, his opponent off a little bit like that. He nearly did it then. Um, and what he needs to do really is just try and make that space, uh, get Craig Williams off him. It's clear he knows what he wants to do, but obviously, yeah. Allen's just too strong. Yeah, I think there's an experience level difference with the grappling, so uh, Craig Williams following him a lot better and, and Craig Allen is really trying to muscle his way out. So he's got an overhook now with his left arm. Um, but when he reverses in there he's gone the wrong way. So he's he's gone he's taken the overhook, gone the wrong way and so back to where he started, um, taking heavy ground and pound. I mean we got into this very quickly, but it didn't take long for either of them to work the other out. No, uh, I think Craig Williams was was keen to just get this to the floor start working his sort of dominant top game um, and he can start to control the arm now like he's doing so he's getting a knee on the bicep there to stop Craig Allen blocking some of the punches um, so he's moving now and he's going to force I think Craig Allen over onto his belly um, and take his back so he's got his back now and he's got two hooks in um, he's posturing up but I think the ref's pulling him for the back of the head uh, he's going to go and try and re the choke now, so he's going in with one arm under the chin to find the the chin. Um, looks like he's switching arms. Well, what can Alan do here, really? So what he needs to focus on is fighting that hand. So um, Craig Williams' his left hand has gone under his chin and now it's about to be, it's all over. It's all over, he's tapped. Um, so he's a re naked choke, he needed to make some space between, get, it, get his arm and his hands in between um, his opponent's forearm and his neck. To try and make some space there and what he concentrated on was staying up rather than defending his own net the big important part 
Um, so Craig Williams comes away with a win. He knew, he knew what he wanted to do there. He, he, very quick, first round stuff. Yeah, calm. And, and what he did was did his game plan. Um, people can talk about what they want to do, but when he went in there, he did exactly what he wanted to do. Took the fight to the ground and finished it, ended it. And another step forward to getting noticed, bigger fights. Yeah, I think um, with, with Craig Williams, you know, he's got a good foundation there. And, and, and if he can just keep building up and building up and getting that experience, then, you know, who knows? European featherweight title fight. It's Ryan Morgan versus Zach Thomas. Both look very confident going into the ring. Yeah, different styles they look like. Ryan Morgan looks like he's quite chilled, quite relaxed. And then we've got Zach on the other side and he looks quite intense. He looks kind of like he's trying to get, get in his opponent's face a little bit. And is there, is there techniques you can use to kind of either prepare yourself or get into people's heads? Is that absolutely? Yeah, I think I think that with Zach, what he's trying to do is intimidate his opponent, get a bit of fear fear in, in his opponent. Really, um, some people like to do that. Um, some people just like to try and be as calm as they can and, and, and do their game. And the fact that this is for a belt, it's for the Budo European featherweight title belt, it adds more pressure, another 10, 20%. Yeah, it's got to be extra pressure. It's probably got, they've probably both got a few fans uh, around, a couple of friends, maybe some family uh, around, and they're about to touch gloves now, I think. One thing that always uh, I, I wonder, Reese, is quite a clear height difference between these two. Does that come into? Absolutely, yeah. Reach yeah. is normally quite a, quite an advantage if Zach's doing straight punches. So they touch gloves and get started. Zach's probably looking to keep a bit of range because he is longer. Oh, and Morgan clips him wow. straight away. Huge. And Morgan's looking for him and he shoots in. Zach shoots in. Bet Morgan is straight on top, knee on belly. And I think he's going to try and rain down some punches from here, it looks like. Oh, big shots from top. Big hits. Yeah, Zach tries to get his guard back now. Zach's got his guard back now and he needs to kind of control him there for a second and get his composure back. So Morgan's posturing up. If you look, his posture's so strong that Zach's unable to secure that arm to look to, to attack an arm bar. His posture is just so strong. And Ryan's just repeatedly landing, isn't he, here? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and they're, they're big shots he's throwing. Um, he's back inside control now, so Zach's got no real answer for that pass. Um, now he's doing, going in for a forearm choke, Ooh, and Zach's tapped. tapped. Yeah, Zach's tapped. Uh, the forearm choke must have been right, right in the sweet spot. So he didn't, he wasn't able to last long in that. Bit, bit of respect after. Yeah, nice. Zach's trying to, trying to say, you know, well done. It doesn't look like Ryan Morgan's, you know, he's, he's not, not too bothered about that. He's more happy with his corner and, and that sort of thing. Big fight, I'm sure we're gonna see uh, definitely more of Ryan. Absolutely, um, I think he's seemed quite composed. I think he'll probably you know, defend this belt at Budo and, and move forward. Um, and maybe Zach will come back and try and challenge him again. And we're gonna 
head to ringside now with our reporter Joe Brook to hear more. Right, you've just won first round, very comfortable. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel really good. Um, he made a remark to me on the way in, said to bring my A game. So I felt he was a little bit disrespectful. So I was just gonna, I, I wanted to finish him straight away. From the very start, you looked very comfortable. Was, was there a game plan in place? Nah, I knew he'd be quite wild. Um, so if he was gonna come in wild, I'd take him down. But I think I hit him for the left straight. And he knew that I had too much power for him. He just didn't, you know, it was a matter of time from then. And what's next for you as a fighter? Uh, probably gonna turn pro now and see how that goes. You know, I can probably make flyweight, so I think I'd be quite uh, forced to be reckoned with it that way. Lovely. So we've got a bit of a different one now with uh, K1 
K1, it's K1 rules. Do you want to explain to me, Reese, what exactly that means? Okay, so it's kickboxing. Um, unlike MMA, there's no grappling. Um, and unlike Muay Thai, um, there isn't any clinch work. So they can't use two hands to clinch um, and then throw knees, um, similar to what you see in MMA um, or in Muay Thai fights. And we've got, uh, we've got Josh Dennis in blue shorts versus David, one more round in black shorts. Different gloves, am I right as well? Yeah, I think they've that? got slightly different gloves. Um, but I think they're the same same weight and everything. It's not not a problem. Um, but it looks like David Round is really composed, confident, confident as always. I guess. Some of our fans might remain uh, remember David one more round from our last Budo uh, broadcast. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah. I think a lot of people, if you're into this around Swansea, you're probably going to know him. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, and it's becoming a more and more part of MMA now. It's um, part and parcel, isn't it? It's yeah. a package. You have a personality. You wear certain things. I think he's known for his knee guards. Yeah. Usually seen in wrestling, I would say personally, yeah. but why not? Absolutely. And it's it's a brand at the end of the day. He's, you know, he's he's hoping to make himself enough money to sort of um, do this, you know, um, and make good money doing it. Um, so he needs to. Both of them look quite, quite prepared, actually. Yeah, I think um, both they both uh, both quite um, quite happy to be there. Qu both quite comfortable. Um, Do think, either of them go in as a favourite? Um, I'd say purely for the unexpectedness, Dave, David Round's probably the favourite. Um, but oh, look at that leg kick! So the leg kick there from from David Round looks like it really sort of et into the thigh of uh, Josh Dennis there. Oh, and he's finishing every combo with a leg kick. So they're really brutal. And we can't even comprehend, can we, the, the pain in the back of the thigh this must cause. Oh, oh, it's horrible. Imagine a dead leg when you were a kid and you were in school, you got a dead leg. Imagine that times 10. And then um, knees. Oh, no. So what? Um, he's clinched up there and, and need him. Um, so I don't think that's going to count. The ref's going to sort that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ref's, the ref's saying it doesn't count. Um, I'm sure David Round will be asking why. Um, you'll probably feel like that was a, a great knee. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. So he's just explaining there that you can't clinch with two hands um, on the back of the neck in the, in the classic sort of Muay Thai plum um, and deliver a knee, um, as brutal as that knee was. Um, but that is going to take it out of Josh, isn't it? The fact yeah. that he still had to take that to the chest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not going to be fun for him at all, but I guess he's just happy he's still in it. No standing eight count. Um, but those leg kicks are still landing, and that one landed when he had a straight leg. That is not where you want to be. So now he's okay. He's clinching with one hand. Josh so is okay. landing though. He's landing punches. He's landing lots of punches. I think that the round is eating them, eating them and laughing, eating them and laughing. But the leg kicks are really going to start slowing Josh down. Mm. You can you can see his footwork has definitely changed. Yeah, it's not. It, oh, and he's gone high. So he's tricked him. He's been playing with the low kicks, making him think that he's going to kick him in the leg and then go up high. It's a classic. He's struggling to get up there, Josh's knees. Took a second on his knees. Yeah, he's going to take a standing eight count. And he's gone back. No, he's all right. He's all right. He'll be fine. So he's Ref's making sure now. he's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just want to make sure because they take the standing eight count in kickboxing and like MMA. But David, so chilled while he's waiting. Yeah, and he Just... nearly need him again. Oh, high kick, high kick, Down big again. high kick. Um, and I thought he need him then for a sec with with two hands, but it looks like maybe he just had one hand and and it was you know um, borderline, <laughs> but but not illegal. He knows what he wants to do here, doesn't okay, he? Okay, he's okay. He's okay. Oh, and he's ah oh, the ref stopped it. That's it. He stumbled. Um, they got to look after the fighter. <laughs> I think he's shouting to the crowd. I think he's shouting to the crowd. Well, I is. don't know what he's shouting, but he's definitely Are you shouting. not entertained? Must be a <laughs> big Russell Crowe fan. <laughs> and he's there. I'm, I'm sure he'll just check with the rules and check with his opponent, make sure he's okay. You want to check to make sure that um, everything's okay with him, you know. Yeah, he's, he's been knocked about, Josh, but it's nice to see David going over. And it, we see this with all the fighters, actually, locally. Because they all have to cross paths. It's oh, such absolutely. A, it's such a tight-knit thing in South Wales, actually. Yeah, and, and without your opponent, you can't compete either. So, exactly. um, without without Josh there, um, David doesn't get to fight. No. So, I'm sure he would be the first to tell you that that's what he wants to do. So, you know, now he gets to. So, he looks really happy with himself and, and well-deserved. Those leg kicks are absolutely brutal. And then he makes makes you think about the low kick, and then it goes up high, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> Some great combinations.
D uh, David, he's got to be going on to bigger and better things soon. You hope so. Uh, you know, I, I wish the best. Uh, wish the best to all these guys. Um, but you know, um, it's hard to get get yourself out of Wales. It's growing in Wales, so that's good. Okay, we're going to go to ringside now to hear more from that fight. Congratulations, Jack. Two minutes to finish the uh, match. Are you um, brilliant. Um, you know, I've, I've gone on to uh, K1 now at Shadow Makers. My stand up is my strong point. Stand me, you're going to hit lockdown, you're going to have more. Josh brought it, a lot of respect to him, but um, I knew it. I'd take the leg kicks and then I guess I'll bring up the head. But tough opponent and fair play to step in for me. Like you said, you keep going very well for the fight. Is that something you're working on before? I, I, my, I, I train legs twice, two times a week. Uh, but my leg kicks are heavy and I, may, I think it showed in the last fight I had. Um, I've got big leg kicks and if you can take them and you can still fight, I'll switch up to the head. And Do you think the fight should have been stopped a bit sooner? No, no, I mean, it, it, went, um, I, I, it was a bit of a different rule change where yeah. You weren't allowed to clinch. When you were at 4K1, you could clinch and throw an east. So the first thing I landed was actually, I thought, legal, but it wasn't. Um, but no, he got up. He got up after the second time, and then the third. He probably could have carried on in his head, but he was stumbling. So this is it, this is the big one, this is the one people are waiting for locally. It's the Budo Featherweight European title. We've got Marley Swindles versus Common Day. Uh, yeah, Marley, big local hero, big local hero. So um, everyone here will be looking for him and you can hear it in the crowd. Uh, everyone's excited for him. Um, he's recently just come back from Thailand where he's been training on his kickboxing. Um, so it'd be good to see uh, what he can show. This was the fight the crowd were waiting for. It is electric. Uh, I, went, I went to the Buda before this and no fights were anywhere near what this crowd was like. No, absolutely. It's the, it's the, the old sort of uh, the, the hero that went away to train and then he's come back and uh, now everyone wants to see him fight. Um, and, you know, he's a nice guy to boot, so I think that, that only gets him extra fans. Some people like the, uh, like the kind of showboating and that. Marley's just a nice guy, really, and I think that gets him as many fans. The last Budo, obviously John Phillips got the call from the UFC and both of these are both, I think, looking for that call. Absolutely, I think um, Marley's got, got something to show with his, with his Thai boxing and I think Conan Day is, is a really, really good prospect. Um, he comes out of Paris, France um, and, and he looks really solid, really solid striker. I'm not sure he wants to grapple with Marley, but he is a solid striker. So we're starting off with some leg kicks, they're just feeling each other out, they're trying to see what's going on. Uh, it looks to me like Common Day is, is athletic, very powerful and explosive. And just going back to the fact he came from Paris, France for this fight, I think it just reinforces what a serious belt this is. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, he's, it's a big and bold move from him, coming all the way to, to South Wales to come and, come and try and take a belt off a lo literally a local hero um, that probably the majority of the people are here to see. Um, so, you know, you've got to give the guy credit when he's stepping into the lion's den um, to, to fight. So this is, is it three ten-minute rounds? Um, so this would be um, five five-minute rounds. Um, so because it's for a tiles, five five-minute rounds. 
um, which is plenty. Um, so looking at the speed these two guys are going, this is gonna, not going to be five five minute rounds. They're both really going for it, high energy. Um, and I'm not sure they'd have the gas to go five rounds at this speed because they're both looking to finish this fight. But so again, for the other fights we've seen tonight, so different. I mean, they're both still trying to work each other out. There's a respect there, definitely, isn't there? Yeah, I think they're both really cautious uh, at the moment to make sure that they don't get caught with that big shot. I think with Marley's Thai uh, background, he's going to be um, looking to clinch and, and land some knees. Um, and I think some dirty boxing with some elbows is going to be sort of more his, more his style. Um, with Con, Con Monde, he's more of a traditional looking kickboxer, so I think he's going to be more explosive, big shots. Um, so we'll see how this sort of pans out. At the moment it looks like Marley's sort of feeling the, the brunt of the power on Conlon Day, but he's landing his own shots, he's getting the leg, leg kicks in. Do they want to get this to the floor if they can? Um, yeah, I think with um, the ground game, Marley Swindles, I think, has an advantage. Um, he's trained with Chris Reese, um, and that's given him a good foundation. Um, and he's been in Thailand training MMA, so he's definitely getting some high-level grappling training in Thailand as well. Um, but it looks like from the grappling, come on day is much stronger. He's just muscling into the corner. Um, he's going to land some shots here. Um, Marley's really just trying to get out. He's just trying to get away from the cage just to break out. And now he might look to land a few knees. Um, come on day doesn't want any part of the clinch. He's getting out of there. So let's talk about their energy. How important is it for them to kind of realise when they need to reserve it? Yeah, I think these two, if you notice, they're really experienced. So you'll notice come on day now, he's trying to see, seize a finish. So he's trying to spend some energy, see if he can get a finish. But if you look now, he's sort of stopped. He's kind of, he's realised that the opportunity might not be there and, and maybe he needs to just control it. So you can sort of see the, the difference in experience with Marley and come on day. Uh, compared with some of the other fighters, with the amateur fighters, you know, there, there is a more, an experience difference. Um, so Common Day's doing a, a good, good job of trying to force him into the corner, um, but Marley's reversing it now, so that so Marley's winning the wrestling, um, trying to get Common Day to the ground and control that single arm. A couple of knees now for Marley, a couple of knees there, showing a bit, of, showing off a bit of Thai boxing. Um, and his knees look savage, to be fair. They look really brutal. He's putting all his weight into it, and come on day, doesn't look like he wants to be there. And I think th this is probably the fight where you, uh, technically, you've got to understand how much has gone into it. Oh, absolutely. In terms of the amount of preparation that these two guys have put in, I, I think if you're just looking at them, they're, they're giving it their all, and they're still going. Um, they're still going at a good speed. Um, their preparation has been really good. You've noticed that they've evened each other out in the striking, evened each other out in a bit of the wrestling and, and we'll just see how the cardio takes into, comes into play now in a couple of rounds and see what, uh, which one of them comes out on top. And even though this is he uh, featherweight, heavy hitters. Oh, big, big hitters. I think Conlon Day might have the, the advantage. Oh, big knee, big knee. Marley's looking to take him down now. Um, as I say, Conlon Day's got the big power advantage, I think, but I'm wondering if maybe Marley's got slightly better cardio and he can... Um, do more of a, a, a game with uh, volume as opposed to power. Um, so he's just peppering him with some little shots, getting some wrestling on, forcing him into the corner, making Conlon Day wear his weight. That's going to wear Conlon Day down, so you might see him trying to attack the body a little bit, um, try to wear the bigger, stronger opponent out. Um, was Marley trying to lift him then? Um, it was a little bit, so I think it was more just to create space. He, he has, isn't in a position to take him down from here, he needs to get an underhook. Um, and that's the end of the round. Going into round two now, the teams for both corners just about to walk out. What, what would they be talking about here? I think both of them, they're both professional corners, so I think, you know, um, they're just going to be explaining the, the, the finer points of what they need to do. I think um, Marley's going to be concerned about the power of Common Day, so I think they'll be talking him in, around that and explaining how he needs to move and, and, and wear, make Common Day wear his weight. So I think that's what they're going to be talking. I think Common Day's corner is just going to be saying more of the same. I think he's, he's at the moment he's um, winning this fight, so I think he needs to keep things the same and make sure he doesn't burn himself out. So Marley starts off with a knee. And then we're both just feeling each other out again, just making sure that 
quicker to connect this time though. Yeah, they've both turned it up a little bit. If you notice now, they're going for, for heavier kicks. So there's leg kicks coming from Commande and there's body kicks coming from Marley. Marley goes for a little leg kick there and a teeth to the, to the knee. Um, they're quite good in stopping your opponent going forward. So he's stopping Commande from charging in on him with the big power shots like that. Um, the leg kicks are coming in and he's the nice combo from Commande. And then he goes for a big takedown. Marley gets taken down. Commande's in side control now, so Marley could do with pushing off uh, the fence, um, getting some space. We so make space, Commande doesn't want to grapple, so Commande does not want to grapple with him. I can hear his corner shouting. Um, Marley is a, uh, an experienced grappler, so um, that might be a smart call. Um, he's so far, Commande is winning the wrestling, so he can control where the fight takes place. He looks fully in control of round two. Yeah, I think at the moment Marley's sort of tr still feeling that power, still feeling that Commande's extra strength, and I think he needs to weather the storm a little bit longer. There's some good straight punches come in. Looks like he's trying to do more jabs, um, pepper his opponent. Uh, body shot there from Marley. Big push kick then from, uh, from Commande. No, something we've noticed with both these fighters, a lot of peppering of the shots. And people probably think this is just a punch connecting or a kick connecting and it's not much more than that. But it's taken its toll, isn't it? There's a cumulative effect. So I think, you know, you can you can land a couple of um, solid body shots, great. You might burn yourself out doing it. But if you land a cumulative shot, anyone who's watched Joe Calzaghe box could tell you that that doesn't always win you fights having the big power. Joe Calzaghe was really successful with the volume striking. Um, you see it now in the UFC with Michael Bisbing. He's a volume puncher. He's still a middleweight champion of the world. Um, so we've got Marley Hughes trying to adopt more of that style and just make sure he keeps himself safe from the big power con one day. Yeah. And these guys are so lean, there's not much fat on them. So when they get punched, they're going to feel it. Absolutely. But they're also conditioned. I know certainly from, from Marley's um, training in Thailand, the Thai uh, boxers in Thailand train extremely hard. So his conditioning in the body area and his knees and his shins will be really good. Um, it looks like when he clinches and knees um, Commande, it's the time where Commande is, is most uncomfortable. So big kick from Commande there. It looks like he's still got plenty of power to play with. I think he's just biding his time. He's not, his volume has gone down, so he's not throwing any big punches anymore. He's just throwing the one big one to take Marley out. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Come on, Day, he's going for kicks to the head. Is that a finisher he's looking for? Yeah, he's much more looking for that one big shot. Marley's looking to just pop away, just touch him, just make sure he keeps making contact. It looks like Marley's moved more towards straight jabs and body shots as Come on, Day goes to take him down. Um, Marley moves into the scissor guard, um, so he's um, done that there. So we've got Marley Swindles, uh, he's been taken down, he's on the bottom, he's trying to defend himself from strikes and he's doing a good job at the moment of using a knee shield um, to keep um, Commande away. Um, Commande doesn't quite know how to fix um, this issue where he needs to pass that top knee. So Marley's getting his top knee back in now between him and, and Commande and that's causing him problems. Um, so Commande is, is left at quite a distance. He, he doesn't know what to do with Marley, does he? No, it looks like Marley's a lot more technical on the ground. And, and Oh, he's taken Mount though, so his power has, has taken taken the forefront in his wrestling. Um, so he's posturing up now, looking to strike. Marley does a good job there of pushing him off, making space. Although he's given up his back, so he's going to find the cage now. And he's just trying to get himself out of danger. So right now, showing the experience level. Commande is not burning himself out going for something. Marley's not burning himself out, Marley's out, so Marley's gone back into half guard now. Um, I think Commande chose that, so he didn't lose the position. Commande still looking for the finish, I'd say? Yeah, I think so. I think he's, he's smelled a little bit of blood with Marley at the moment. Marley needs to really weather this storm and just stay in it for now. He needs to stay in it. You can hear the crowd starting to get, get behind him and, and really scream, and I think that's going to help. Now let's talk about the positioning in the... the the octagon here, they're right in Marley's corner. Will they be helping him? Will they be telling him where his man on is, if you will? Yeah, I think um, well, the good thing about that is that he's going to be getting concise instructions from his corner. They're going to be explaining to him the technicalities of the wrestling that he's doing rather than sort of shouting across the cage. Um, and for an experienced athlete like Marley, that can only help. He will be able to hear them and do listen to what they're saying. And that's the end of round two. Great round, but who are we, who are we saying won it? So I think 
Um, I can't really give it to Common Day at the moment. I think um, Marley's trying his best to weather the storm. He's picked himself up. A crowd are bound to be helping him with that. Um, he's trying to land volume, but when he gets clipped by Common Day, you can see it's taking its toll on him. Right, going into round three now. Okay, so in the corners, um, over over the half, they would have been saying to you know keep the energy levels up. I think Marley needs to get the volume up now, so Marley needs to really land some shots like he's doing, so he's trying to go in for some straight punches. Fatigue's going to be setting in now, isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Common Day might be feeling a little bit more. He's a bigger guy. Um, he's got more muscle to fuel. Um, Marley's been training um, hard in Thailand. Um, he might have a little bit more confidence in his cardio at the moment. Now, people at home might be wondering why you keep mentioning Thailand and how important it is. It's, it's a next level, isn't it, when you go to Thailand to train? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I have a, a friend of mine who's in Thailand right now training um, in kickboxing and um, Muay Thai um, kickboxing originates from Thailand and they are some of the best athletes in the entire world. Um, it's an incredible place to train. So Marley's coming in here, he's trying to up the volume, he's trying to put more pressure on Common Day through the spinning back kick there, um, landed, um, didn't look like there's much on it, but those spinning back kicks are brutal when they catch you in the body. Um, so it looks like Marley's going for straight punches, where he can, he's going to the body, he's trying to wear Common Day down, just to make sure that that power that he had is not there anymore. Now they've both had uh, two, two and a half great rounds to kind of work each other out, could either of them now be thinking maybe this won't be a knockout? Maybe they're thinking points, maybe they're thinking combinations? I feel like this is a sort of fight where they've, they've kind of earned each other's respect as they've gone through. They started off cautious of each other um, and they've both proved that their caution was, was justified really. They, they've equaled each other on, on the feet. Um, I think in Jiu-Jitsu, Mali has shown that he's dangerous um, enough to keep Kamande off him. Kamande is winning the wrestling. Um, so they break there and Marley's trying to get in with a few more strikes. Come on, Day's got a bit of energy now. He's think, coming back a little bit. The one thing people might be noticing as well, then now air punches, air kicks is starting to happen. Is that part of fatigue? Um, miss him? Yeah. Yeah, um, and actually they tire you out more. Um, the most tiring thing is missing. Um, and so what they'll be doing now is the, the person trying to counter will be getting better and getting out of the way because they'll recognise you, your movements. Um, but really, it's a part of its tightness. So Marley's really digging into the body now. Huge body shots. Yeah, oh, and a kick. Um, and he's really trying to wear on him. So he's trying to, come on, Day looks tired. He looks really tired now. So Marley's starting to pick up the pace and the crowd again behind him. He's weathered an incredible storm to get to this point. And he's got an extra man, hasn't he? That crowd all being on his side, it's oh, going to give absolutely. you something else, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and in the LC too, because it's it's got that um, that big space, it's going to bounce around and he's going to hear every single one of them shouting for him. Um, he's a big local favourite and everybody wants him to put, come away with a victory against a tough Common Day. So knees now, Common Day looks like he's getting back into it a little bit. Every now and again he throws a little bit of energy into it. Um, and it, it, it's a mirror image of round two, it's roles reversed. We saw this with Common Day in round two, but now Marley has gone, he's found another gear. He has, yeah, and, and that's that's the confidence he's got, so he, he's confident in his, his cardio. Oh, big elbow, big elbow through the guard. He's trying to really break Common Day now. And Common Day's feeling that, isn't he? Yeah, you can see it in his eyes, he really felt that. He blocked it, but an elbow like that goes straight through. Uh, Marley's looking like he's tired, just like Common Day, but he's got that little bit more. Um, the crowd are probably giving him that little bit extra. Common Day walks onto a knee, another big knee from Marley. Looks like he's hunting for the body. And you can see Common Day actually there hold himself in a kind of wincing pain to the body. Absolutely, yeah, and, and what he's doing is he's not fighting the position anymore. He's starting to block the, the knee, which isn't the right thing to do. He really needs to get himself out of the position where they, Marley can land the knee. So there's dirty boxing uppercuts coming in now. More body shots. Uh, Marley's looking like he's really turning up the heat now. Marley's pushing forward. And let's talk about the positioning of the head. How important is that? It's like a scrum-esque, isn't it? Yeah, and, and what Marley's trying to do there is to push his head into, into Common Day's face um, to turn it one way. If he turns it to the full extreme to, to one side, it means that Common Day can't move his shoulders. Um, and that then pins him into the cage. So he's really doing a good job of that. Now Common Day goes for a takedown there. 
Arnie's taken Marley down. I think that's fatigue. I, I think that's fatigue more than anything. There, Marley didn't didn't wasn't able to put up a very good defence there. Um, but it doesn't look like Comonde wants to go down to the ground with him either. I think Comonde is weary of the uh, uh, jiu-jitsu of Marley, um, and now he doesn't have maybe the strength and the power he had in the first two rounds. He maybe doesn't want to play jiu-jitsu with uh, with Marley anymore. Um, so he's looking like he's going to disengage. He's laying a little bit of ground and pound now. Okay, so now we're into round four. Uh, Marley Swindles has made it this far. Um, good on him. He started to turn the tide against Common Day, who's looked really strong so far. Both different men, though, from the start, and obviously. They're tired, they've both been hit a lot. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think they've both really sort of earned each other's respect and they've, they've sort of pushed each other to the absolute limit. And, and really, from, as an athlete, that's, that's all you really want um, is to have that challenge. Um, and these boys are really giving it. Mm, they're both landing now, so they're opening up a bit now and they're a bit less cautious of each other. They're more sort of willing to take a risk to, to land a punch or a kick. Um, Commande looks like he's got a bit of energy back, he's a bit bouncier. Well over halfway through the fight on a hole, would their mind frame change in this? Would they now be thinking, conserve energy and go for a finish? I think if they, um, if the, they may start to feel like you know, they've got a bit left in the tank, I doubt these two have, they've been going for it. So I think they're mostly just thinking, you know, how, how do I keep this going and, and how do I stay composed and, and don't waste energy? Because if you notice the difference between the earlier fights and now, these guys are just choosing their moments so precisely that they don't waste too much energy. Mm. So they're just sort of feeling each other out now, trying to find a bit of range. And again, as I say, they don't want to waste any energy, so they're, no. they're trying to sort of uh, maintain now. So Common Day's looking like he's got a bit more energy. Marley's keeping good distance, though. Um, he's landing, landing punches every time Common Day does. Um, what he really needs to do is have a round like the last round. If he can do that again, he can make it two rounds each. Um, and we can sort of go into a fifth round with, with, um, with that on the line. Um, so at the moment now, Marley's starting to pick up the pace. He's cornering Commande, really. Um, he's not able to get out of that corner. Right. He doesn't look like he's got the energy. He's in control, isn't he? Yeah, he's he, covering he's up. He's got him exactly where he wants him, just waiting, trying to work him out. Yeah, absolutely. I think Marley's doing really good, and I think his experience in stand-up is really make, showing now because he's only he's kind of hunting his opponent, cornering him off, but he isn't charging in, and he's not looking to kind of get caught with a big power shot from a dangerous guy. Um, as soon as he lets his guard down, Commande is going to unleash something, one of those big kicks or a big punch, and he can leap in as well and do, deliver that. Now we've got a bit of tension sort of rising now in the, in, in the arena. I think that the crowd is still right behind Marley and they really want to see him succeed and it's giving him that little energy boost. Um, so we've got a couple of body shots there from Marley. Um, Commande's just sort of eating him up really. Um, he's quite happy at the moment. Um, but he's just trying to conserve energy. I feel like Commande is waiting for that big chance to explode. So Marley goes in for a takedown. Um, Marley needs to uh, Try and lock his hands together if he's going for a double. He's gone for a single and he's disengaged. So Commande is still too strong for, for Marley to get his, his jiu-jitsu and his wrestling working. Um, so he's gone for a little uh, one-two and a little hook. So Commande looks like he's got a little energy now. So second win from Commande now. Um, looks like he's got a little bit of spring in his step. Um, he is, he's just been prepared. holding back, hasn't he? And I think he's, it, again, tactics. Yeah, absolutely. His experience is shining through a little bit. He kind of saved his energy and he wow. went for a one-two there, nearly Take caught it. nearly caught Marley. Um, but he saved his energy and now he's got it yeah. for the end of the round. So he's clipped Marley again, big knee. Uh, Marley's just covering up, trying to land whatever he can. Um, swing and a miss from Marley there, it's unfortunate. It's going to waste a bit of energy for him, he won't be happy with himself. Um, couple of knees there. They're both so tired, aren't they? Yeah, you can see they're both really fatigued. They've given it their absolute all. So Marley's trying all he can to, to take him down, but his posture's not quite there, so he hasn't got the power to lift um, come one day, and he's got his back arched a bit, so he hasn't quite got the best grip. Uh, and come one day gets out. He kept a Kimura grip. Come one day kept the Kimura grip on Marley, and Marley bailed out on the takedown. So 
I think that's fatigue from both people there. Um, and they're both just back on their feet. And Commande looks like he's got a bit of a smile on his face. He looks quite quite happy. I he's, feel. he's a lot more open, isn't he, in stance? Oh, and well. he's got him. Mar he's got wow. Marley's. And the ref's got to stop it. Yeah, the ref stopped it. So, clip mm. Marley. Big kick. So he looked like he got his energy back and he was saving it. And then when he delivered that big kick to Marley, that was all she wrote. And the it crowd, is. the crowd aren't happy, but credit where credit's due, Common Day has really been a stiff opponent for, for the local hero. I th it was so quick. We've, we've got to see a replay of that. Let's just watch that one more time. Absolutely, yeah. So um, he's come in there and he's just delivered a kick right to the solar plexus. Um, and there's nothing Marley can do there. I mean, he's had been in a long fight, a grueling fight, and, and you know, that was just as much as he could take. And now we've got Common Day um, kneeling down by Marley, um, just wishing him all the best, similar to the other fighters. They've got nothing but respect for mm. each other. Um, Common Day came all the way from Paris, France, to come and fight Marley. Um, and I'm sure, had it been the other way around, Marley would be the first person to, to do the same. Um, so that's credit to to come on day there. Marley's still down, unfortunately. I think the medics are just looking at him now, just to make sure he's okay. Um, it was a big, big kick, so mm. we just want to make sure he hasn't got any like lasting injuries. Um, and come on day is still kneeling down, showing his respect to to the fire. Mm. Um, and we've got to remember here, we we this happened 20 minutes, basically 20 minutes into a fight. Absolutely. So there's going to be less oxygen to the brain. They've already taken a huge amount of hits. Yeah. More prone, would you say, to being knocked out? Yeah, absolutely. And and that that was, you know, I mean, we can talk about body kicks and, and like people head hunt when they're looking for a knockout. I mean, that was a kick to the chest, uh, the solar plexus, and it did the job. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, the extra punch on the ground maybe didn't need need that. The ref was giving Marley a chance maybe, but, mm -hmm. but um, he was not able to get back up. And so what would that do? Is that knocking wind out of it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Take your breath away. And also there's an aspect of, I don't know exactly where the, where the kick landed. It could have been um, in the liver. Mm -hmm. um, and it is debilitating. Um, uh -huh. Marley would be struggling for air for a little while and, and it would really be hard for him. Like, there's, no, there's no way to live through that. You Congratulations on winning the title. How do you feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? It's Jack or one? Ah, okay. I feel... Okay. He feels a little bit hurt. Okay. But it's okay. But I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I'm really happy because we've worked so long for this. Yes, and we've got it. And we've got it. And we've got it. Voilà, et mon adversaire, bah, franchement, c'est un bon adversaire parce que... Marley Swindle, c'est un bon adversaire, donc il peut vous congratuler aussi parce que c'est un bon adversaire. Il ne m'a pas laissé venir chez la chercheur. C'était très dur. Il a fait un bon fight pour ça. Et bravo à lui. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie, 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 je vous remercie. Ah oui, comment ça se passe au niveau des jambes, t'as vu quelques... Ah ouais, 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 ouais. Ouais. Yes, he takes a few kicks and uh, ouais. he's going to he's going to feel this during uh, the few days. Il a bien visé quoi, il a bien visé. And what's next in your career after this win? C'est quoi maintenant le futur après cette victoire? Ah ouais, déjà faut se reposer. Et puis après, uh, now he wants to rest and ouais. after maybe avec uh, to, my team quoi. He's going to defend to defend him to defend the belt maybe uh, if something good is coming or what if what something else in any opposition or defense.
So, how are you feeling about your fight tomorrow night? Yeah, feeling good, feeling strong, feeling ready. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to get the job done in hand. Last time out at this, we saw you have a comfortable first round win. Yeah. What are your predictions for tomorrow night? Um, well, like I said, I don't really, like the last two fights, I did predict exactly what I was going to do. But in this fight, they got a bit of an opponent with uh, Ali Arish comes in with a really tough wrestling background. So I'm just going to go do my stuff <coughs> and take it to him and, uh, and go from there, to be honest, you know. Well, yeah, like you said, what do you make of your opponent? Well, I make of Ali, you know, he's a tough, very respectful opponent, 21 and 6. Um, he's going to bring his A game, so well, he's going to need to bring his A game against myself. So, but like I said, um, I see it going either knockout or a, or a finish again. I do not see it going the distance. And like Ali likes to take his fights to the distance, but um, with the opponent myself in front of him, it'll be a different kettle of fish tomorrow night. And what are your ambitions as a fighter? Well, my ambitions is like anybody's dream. You know, we all here to do this sport to get to the top of the UFC. As I said, we got three top current boys of Wales. Brett Jones, uh, John Phillips and Mark Mar Jack Marshman making the UFC so it's opened the door massively for boys like myself and, and certain people so yeah that's that's the ambition. And how has it been training for the fight? Camp's been good, very good, um, I like always you know tough camp, we came we go out morning after morning, day after day so yeah preparation's been good, we covered in every aspect so ready to rock and roll tomorrow night. And physically feeling alright or ready for yeah, the fight ready tomorrow? ready to go, yeah, yeah all good. Physically ready and said uh, tomorrow night uh, the rain will be fighting all cylinders. This is the Budo European welterweight title fight. We've got Ali Arish versus Jordan the Rhino James. Both look very confident in the ring. Uh, Jordan James, obviously, a bit of a local hero in Swansea. Um, but very quickly, actually, Ali Arish has got Jordan James to the floor in a hold. Um, something to say about Ali Arish is he has a very different style of fighting uh, very different to what you've seen the rest of the night he's much more of a wrestler um, and you can see this from the way he's got Jordan James straight away in a grip got him on the floor um, and he just wants to here be peppering him with those punches that we can see uh, but Jordan James has got, got him in a quite a good safety he's you know knows what's happening he's up against the cage um, he's just trying to keep Ali Arish from locking him up here. Um, John James there peppering a couple to Ali Arish's head. Um, and, you know, all of these, although they might look like little punches, they all, you know, take the toll. Moving on here, we've still had, uh, you know, a lot of this round in a grapple. Ali Arish still on top of Jordan James here, just holding, uh, trying to get him into locks, trying to turn him over here. Now, Jordan, Jordan James is up. Uh, and now this is the position where he wants to try and get back on his feet and use his power and you know punch and he's uh, Ali Arish has got him down they're in the middle of the ring now and Jordan James is just trying to keep Ali Arish at a leg's length um, and he's yep he's got him into yeah on top of his back into a hold and that's the end of the round big round of grappling big round of wrestling I think we know what's in for the onset here let's get to round two And we're back with round two. Jordan James looking a bit, he's upbeat actually. Yeah, I think More he's, upbeat than round one. He's trying to psych himself up now, I think. I think he's, he's sort of worn Ali Arish, uh, worn his weight for the first round. Uh, now he's trying to sort of stay, stay up, I think. Stay on the feet. With his hands down, I think, trying to goad Ali Arish into a bit of a boxing match. Oh, and he's clipped him, he's clipped him. Uh, is this, would you say this is Jordan Ali James' stronger point? Oh, I, I think so compared to Ali Arish, um, but now Ali Arish has been clipped and he's looking to take Jordan James down again. So I can see Jordan James going for that head and arm choke position again. And he's gone for it, but Ali Arish has ended up on the, on the wrong side for, for Jordan James there. Um, so he could do with letting go of that now because it's, um, it's just going to wear his arm out more. And what Ali Arish is doing here is something we've talked about before, it's the, the peppering, isn't it? It's just keep hitting and it's going to hurt and hurt and hurt more and more. Absolutely. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, very difficult position to sort of get out of if somebody's not taking the risks to, to, to land the big shots. Ali Arish at the minute is using a bit more of a consistent game where he's just heavy, uh, making Jordan James carry his weight as best he can, hold him down um, and land shots whenever he can. 
and now they're in the north-south position and uh, Ali Arish is looking to um, try and control his posture again but Jordan James isn't able to make any space at all against Ali Arish. He's just immobilising them, isn't he, really? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, he, he's against the Rhino, but with the Rhino, but he's looking pretty bullish uh, at the minute. And Ali Arish is, um, is wearing Jordan James out with this game. Um, it's going to be really, really difficult for him um, going forward in the match because he's going to be drained. So now we've got Ali Arish in side control, landing more and more shots, just building up, peppering away. Um, Jordan James. It looks like Ali Arish is looking for a, a north-south choke uh, position there, but I think Jordan James is, uh, is hitting him back a little bit, so he's let go of that position. Um, really what Jordan James needs to be doing here is trying to concentrate on the space and not those small shots that he's able to land. Um, they give Ali Arish something to think about, but they're not getting him up and they're not getting him back to the, to the position where he can win this fight. Is there much Jordan can do from this position? Uh, for the last couple of minutes, we've, we saw him kind of using his, the cage with his feet and his legs. He's obviously changed that now, but is there any way you can use things to that like that to your advantage? Absolutely. What he needs to do um, is to try and make space between him and Ali um, by scooting himself away from Ali Arish here, uh, making a little bit of space to give him a chance to regard, so to get his full guard back on Ali Arish. At least that way, Ali Arish has to do something before he's in a position to, to sort of dominate him on the ground. Um, it looks like Jordan James is trying to sneak out back door. So Ali Arish is trying to pin him down a little bit better now and move up his body from side control. Um, I think that does open him up more to getting swept by Jordan James. Um, he's going for some more shoulder strikes. He likes an unorthodox strike. But I guess all all hits that are landed will do something, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like all Ali Arish wants to do is to wear his opponent down. He's looking to wear you out. Um, none of these shots are going to knock him out or anything like that. He hasn't gone for any big submissions. But Jordan James hasn't got an answer for it at the moment, unfortunately. Um, now he's trying to fight a little bit more grappling and he's not looking to punch so much, which is a smart move from Jordan James. That's what he needs to concentrate on at the moment. He's posturing up a little bit more now. Look at how he's trying to land a bit more damage. I think he's trying to wear Jordan James out a little bit more with strikes. He's trying to land a bit more power now. Um, and Jordan James is just sort of hanging on now. Um, I think trying to save as much energy as he can when he gets an opportunity to get up. So far, Ali Arish is not giving him a chance to get up. Now, obviously, with these punches where they're grappling and punching, no, you're not going to be able to get your full weight behind it, but they're still they're still going to hurt, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. Um, the top punches are difficult, um, and there we get to the end of the round. Okay, so we're going into round three. It's the final round. Um, Reese, tell me, are they going to be looking for points here, or are they going to try and finish each other? I if think they can? I think Jordan James has to finish this fight at this point. He's been dominated for two rounds his chances to get up and it looks like Ali Arish is just taking him back down to the ground and putting him in exactly the same position um, that he was in before. Um, it looks like he's a bit more focused on keeping his guard closed and keeping Ali Arish there so he doesn't end up in side control again. Um, but I think Jordan James really needs to get the win from a knockout. Um, Ali Arish is winning on points at the moment so I think it depends on the style of the fighter. How tiring is it for Jordan James to be on the bottom here? Much more tiring than it is for Ali Arish, and that's the main, the main thing. Um, it's much more difficult for Jordan James to, to hold uh, Ali Arish's weight. He's constantly holding some of Ali Arish's weight in the air. Uh, and that makes it very, very difficult to get to, to breathe, to retain energy. Um, and at the moment, he's just being forced into that position. So as much as he might want um, to get up, he needs to, to concentrate on the grappling aspect of it to get himself up and then he can do his work on his feet. And I guess if everything must be tense because as soon as if anything relaxed, Ali Arish is going to know he's going to pounce on it Absolutely. and lock it up, isn't he? Absolutely. And, and, and also if Jordan James does manage to get back to his feet, um, 
he needs to be careful for the shot and when he does try and strike with Ali Arish because it looks like he, he just wants to get Jordan James to the ground and um, ground and pound him. Um, now they're in a north-south position um, and Jordan James has his legs on the, on the fence. I think if he weren't so tired, I think he's exhausted at the moment, but if he weren't so tired and he tries to push off, but Ali Arish is just too strong, pushing him back down. Um, and they're in north-south now. Oh, and Ali Arish goes for hip strike. Um, another unorthodox um, strike. Um, it's not going to do much damage, but it's certainly going to upset your opponent um, without using very much energy. It's a really different fighting style to what we've seen throughout the night. Where, is there any origin to why he'd be fighting like this? Um, I think I go back to the wrestling. He, he appears to be a, um, a really good um, top game wrestler. Um, I think oh, and Jordan James is looking to sw reverse him. Jordan James reverses him and goes for the head and arm choke again, but Ali Arish has fallen to the right side to get out of it, so Ali Arish has had the pressure reduced slightly. Um, the crowd are going wild, and the and Ali Arish is out on his side control now, so the danger almost isn't there. Um, it would just be pure strength if he tapped, and he's out. So Ali Arish is out now, and it, it looks like Jordan Jordan's given it everything he possibly can, but he's back in. Ali Arisha's uh, heavy top game um, and he, d he doesn't look like he knows quite how to get out. And why would Jordan not be able to maintain that? Was it just pure tiredness, do you think? Um, Ali Arisha, as they fell to the floor, Ali Arish went to the left-hand side of Jordan's body um, and that was the perfect thing to do because when they landed, he was in the perfect place. Um, and because of where the, the cage was, had he not done that, it would have been much more difficult for him if they had landed and he wasn't on that side. Uh, he's got, um, Ali Arish has got Jordan James blindsided there um, and what he's looking to do is tie his two legs up um, and pin his hip to the floor so he's able to land more strikes with his upper body. Uh, again, he's not posturing up, looking to risk his position. Back inside control, landing heavy elbows again. This is a very gruelling, gruelling fight for Jordan James now, trying to get himself back into half guard just to try and have a, a position where he can fight his way back to his feet. Um, but with Ali Arish landing shoulder strikes, um, it's really difficult for him to get anything done. Ali Arish looks really strong on top uh, and Jordan James really needs to finish this fight now. Um, he's probably feeling a little bit desperate to get it finished. And that's all over. Wow. So we go to the judges' scorecards on this one, but it looks like Ali Arish is going to take the belt off the Welshman. We're going over to Joe Buck now, who's a ringside with the winner of that last fight. Congratulations on the win. How do you feel? I feel perfect. I feel good. It was a good fight, he was strong, which is I said, he's all around it. And uh, because the title, everybody ready for good show. I really had a heavy handed as well. How close do you think the fight was? I think 10-9, uh, 10-9. You know, for instance, this is three rounds, I won the fight. And what do you think of your opponent tonight, John Jack? Yeah, he was good, which is I say, he's an aggressive fighter, he's trying to push me forward, he's trying to knock me out, and I work against his. I was working against his what he want to do. Do you feel like you were on top for the whole fight? Which is for me, yes. Yeah, because I don't know what George is. George is different idea, I different idea. And what's next for you as a fighter? Anything put on for me, I go forward, yeah. Lovely. Congratulations on the win. Shut up and sit down.